Welcome into to Drew Silly Diamonds for Friday, October 4th, 2024. I am Drew Martin breaking down the slate of games. We got a four pack of college football coming your way. Friday night lights action going in order of kickoff. Let me know in the comments below what your college football picks are for tonight for this weekend. NFL as well coming your way on Sunday. Smash that like button if you're liking the content as first game up. Conference USA action here, 7 o'clock Eastern on CBS Sports Network. Jacksonville State, the Gamecocks, going up against Kennesaw State. The Owls, 49 being the total, minus 16. That is Jacksonville State as the road favorite. It is not a short week for the Gamecocks. They are off of a bye week. By the way, Rich Rod, their head coach, 4-0 at Jacksonville State, off of a bye Plus, two weeks ago, their last game, they won 44-7 to over Southern Miss. So might have found something there. The defense did get four interceptions, but still, strong performance. They are number nine in terms of tempo, seconds per snap. They're going to look to go quick here. It's kind of a, a drastic style difference because Kennesaw State, they take almost 30 seconds in between snaps. And for a 0-4 team, meaning like playing from behind to take that long, you know, they have option principles in that offense, four straight unders, of course. This is an offense that's only scored two offensive touchdowns through four games. They just lost to FCS UT Martin by double digits. I think this is a tough go of it here for Kennesaw State. I think it sets up well for Jacksonville State. Don't love the number. Only way I could go on this is Jacksonville State minus 16 under Rich Rod. 30 minutes later, 7.30 Eastern time on ESPN. Heading to the Big 12, Houston and TCU. Horned Frogs, minus 16-point home favorites, 51 being the total. Same type of profile in terms of side total in this one. Houston comes in 1-4 and four on the season, 0-2 oh in the Big 12. Back-to-back -back games getting shut out. So this offense under Willie Fritz. Uh, great coach overall, by the way, guys. You know, what he did at Tulane, Georgia Southern before that. He's a guy, you know, an old school head coach. I think he's one of the better coaches in college football. But he's also a guy that's not going to, like, you know, ring the alarm bells and change everything, things like that. He's building the program from the bottom up. So it actually might work out well for this season to maybe not look to bet on Houston because he's probably going for future years. And TCU, 3-2 and two on the season they were 0-4 against the spread until last week. They won by double digits on the road against Kansas. That one was, uh, what, an arrowhead. But still, you know, it was a team the week before. They played SMU, and they let up like over 60 points. But I watched almost every play of that game. Very misleading score. They had five turnovers, four defensive touchdowns against them. So I actually think that, you know, box score-wise, they're not as bad as they look. And Sonny Dykes, hey, he's a coach that offensively will look to run it up a little bit. They actually won at Houston last year, 36-13. I think it could be something similar to that, guys. Again, it's a big number, but uh, I think both favorites out the gate are the way to play this. So we're jumping on the Horned Frogs, minus 16 over Houston. Heading to the two late night games up next, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. local time. It's Oregon hosting Michigan State, 52 and a half being the total. Oregon, the Ducks, minus 23 and a half as the home favorite. Michigan State here enters back-to-back -back losses against Ohio State and Boston College. They did cover against BC, but three straight unders, just seven points last week. So this offense kind of struggling. They have a bye next week. Um, in Oregon, kind of breaking their side down, they have or they they have excuse me Ohio State, the Buckeyes next week. So arguably their biggest game of the season. You know, entering the Big Ten there, going up against Ohio State next week. They are four and zero, but just one and three against the spread. Plus the fact, you know, if they get out to the lead. I'm not so sure they're going to look to like run it up and, and get kind of fireworks offensively with Dylan Gabriel. You know, he's been injury prone. I wouldn't be surprised if they kind of sit on the ball, run out the clock. What I'm getting at, guys, is I I like this under. I don't think there's a whole lot of points. I, I could see Oregon winning this, you know, 31-10, something like that. Plus, add on the fact John and Jonathan Smith, the Michigan State head coach, he comes from Oregon State. So, you know, they have the Oregon State, Oregon, the Civil War game. He's 0-3 in Eugene at his time at Oregon State. And the offense never scored more than 10 points in those three games. So I think that all adds on to the fact here, guys. 52 and a hook. 
I don't think we get there. I think we stay in the 40s, if not even lower, guys. So Michigan State, Oregon, we're going under 52 and a half. Got one game left. Check out premium picks, wagertalk.com, Drew Martin experts page, college, football, NFL, Major League Baseball, the division series round. You get all three sports, guys. The special is uh, seven days, $20 off for that package. So all three sports going to be locked and loaded this weekend. Check it out, wagertalk.com, Drew Martin, experts page. And a reminder, if you can comment below, it does help out the algorithm. Recap-wise, I'm actually doing this, uh, what, in the 4 o'clock Pacific time zone. So I don't know what the recap is for the Thursday show, but we will recap it tomorrow on the Saturday College Football Edition. Remember, we got the Sunday edition as well going each and every day. All right, last game up for the Friday Night Light Slate. My favorite game, Syracuse and UNLV, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. local time from Las Vegas, Nevada. 57 and a half being the total, minus six in the hook. That's the running Rebels as the home favorite. Mountain West, atop of it here. They're 4-0 straight up and against the spread, sitting atop uh, the Mountain West division here. Syracuse comes in from the ACC, 3-1, and one, but just 1-3 one and three against the spread. They did lose their one game outright to Stanford. Their quarterback, Kyle McCord, 14 touchdowns on the season. And Syracuse has scored 30-plus points in three of their games, 40-plus last time out. So I actually think this UNLV defense is taking a big step up in class, guys. They just they just faced Fresno State, held played well. But you got to remember, Jed Tedford, he left that program like a month before the season started. So I have my questions about Fresno State offensively. And then the other two big games they played were against Kansas and Houston. I mean, we, we just talked about Houston. They were they, they were just shut out in their last two games. Kansas has had all kinds of offensive issues. So I have my question marks here about the UNLV defense. I think they're taking a step up here. I think Kyle McCord and the Syracuse offense is going to be able to score some touchdowns. The only thing is, on the other side of things, UNLV, their offense has been great. You know, the – Doing research for this game, when you type in UNLV, you know, off it, everything that pops up on Google is just all about the NIL and the quarterback leaving. It, it goes to show it, Google's not a great tool for uh, sports betting content, trying to find like different, you know, key angles and things. But it gets me to the backup. You know, last game he comes in his first start. They score 59 points against Fresno State. Looking good doing so sidewise. It's tough to go up against UNLV. We've seen this move. Everybody's on the running Rebels. You know, they're 4-0, straight up 4-0 against the spread, playing in Las Vegas, everybody knowing them. You look at their against the spread numbers. I mean, yes, 4-0, but they've been covering at the, the first four games by almost 90 points against the spread, meaning they've been really underpriced here. I just think at this time up against Syracuse, Taking the step up, I'm going to stay off sidewise, guys. Instead, talked about the Syracuse offense. I think they're going to be able to score. Add on the fact, you know, it's a controlled climate there, Allegiant Stadium. It's where the Raiders play. Plus, the Raiders don't allow UNLV to play on their on their grass. You know, they put it outside. They they let the sunlight shine on it. They actually play on artificial turf. Therefore, it's a faster track. Even I think that helps the offense, guys. I think there's a lot of points scored is what I'm getting at. I think Syracuse, UNLV, 57 and a hook. I think we get up into the 60s, if not beyond. I think this is a score fest, guys. Late night, last game on the card, FS1, nationally televised game. We're going up and over Syracuse and UNLV. That's the best bet for the show. In recap, we got Michigan State, Oregon under 52 and a half. We got TCU and Jacksonville State. We're laying the number minus 16 so that's going to do it for the friday show guys thanks for tuning in smash that like button comment below enjoy the rest of your friday we'll be back for saturday slate come back and join us catch those tickets until then thanks for tuning in